Okay, in projectile motion, <coughs> we have first initial data, which is v zero, the initial velocity, and also we don't we 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 have to know the angle between the initial velocity vector and the x-axis. I mean this theta, okay. So th this theta angle is also important because even if you throw the object with the same speed, but if the angles are different, the object will land on different positions, right? So <coughs> the question is, uh, we need to find some uh, characteristic uh, information about the time of flight and the range of the projectile motion. When I say time of flight, that means the time it takes of the object to land, okay? For, uh, the duration of the time right from throwing of your object until it hits the ground again. So this time, uh, we can express in terms of the initial speed, V0, and also the uh, angle, the initial throw angle of the object. Let's do this. I need to get an expression of time of flight uh, where the object stays, uh, the duration of the time of the object stays on air. For this, I know when the object hits the ground, the final position in Y is zero, right? I throw the object from an initial uh, position of zero in the Y direction. Object goes up and come down again in the Y direction to zero, right? Then if I put Y is equal to zero, and solve for t, right here, I can get an expression for time in terms of v0 and angle and also g. But g is always constant. So if you do this, <coughs> take the uh, initial position of the object as the origin, that means y0 is equal to 0. And the final position of the object in y is also again 0. So this 0 will be equal to v0 y times t minus 1 half gt square, right? You can easily solve for t. If you equate this to 0, you can get ex ex an expression for t like in here, okay? You can easily do that at home. But in here, in t in, instead of v0 y, I put v0 times sine theta. Because if you know the speed of the initial velocity, then you can, you, can, you can get an expression for its y component, right? By using the trigonometry, sine of this angle is nothing but the projection of this vector y, vector uh, v0, on the y-axis. So you get this expression, t is equal to 2 times v0 sine theta divided by g. You can immediately tell time it takes to reach at the top position, right? If I ask you to find the time to reach here, it's just half of this, right? Because as I said, uh, the trajectory is symmetric around the midpoint, around the top point. So <coughs> if it takes some time to reach from here to here, the same amount of time will be from here, top position, to the ground again. Okay? So, T of maximum, we can easily write. Let me write it down. We usually call this a uh, time to reach the, the maximum position or top position as V0 times sine of theta divided by G. And if I put this expression, 
for time, that means twice V is zero sine theta divided by G. I mean T of flight in X expression, okay? Because X is equal to V zero X times T. If you replace this T in here with the time of flight, I can get an expression for the range of the object. What I mean by range is the distance, the uh, horizontal distance from the initial position of the object to the place where it hits the ground. <coughs> this is called the range, and it's shown as capital R. So the range, if you put, instead of V0x, you can put V0 times cosine theta, right? Because it's the a horizontal component of the velocity. And if you multiply this by this time, 2 V0 sine theta divided by G, you can get an expression for the range in terms of V0, theta, and G. So once you know the initial speed and the angle, you can get immediately the answer for the object, object's range. It is V0 squared uh, divided by G times sine of 2 theta, okay? 2 times the angle. You can uh, also memorize this, uh, but I will give this type of information uh, on your exam paper. You don't need to memorize this anymore. Anyway, there is an immediate consequence of this expression. V0 squared divided by G times sine of 2 theta. You can immediately tell me the maximum range with respect to theta. Suppose you are throwing an object with a 10 meter per second speed. What, will be, what, what angle would you choose in order to maximize this range? Okay. At what angle this range will be maximum? The question by looking at this expression. You know, sine of any angle is always equal to or less than one, right? Sine of something must be uh, at most, can be at most one. Sine of something cannot be more than one. Am I right? Sinus, bir şeyin sinüsü birden fazla olabilir mi? Biliyorsunuz değil mi bunu? Tamam. So that means you can immediately tell me with which angle I should throw the object to, to maximize the range. Which angle I put in the equation so that I can get sine of 2 times this angle equal to 1. Hangi açının sinüsü birdir arkadaşlar? Ha? 90 mı? 90. O zaman hangi açıda atmam gerekiyor? 45 derece değil mi? So, if you are limited with the uh, velocity, fixed velocity, but you want to uh, throw the object as far as you can do in the x-axis. Then you will choose 45 de degrees angle. So if you choose 45 degrees, then the maximum range, let me also write here as our max, V0 squared divided by G. So as you see, the maximum range uh, goes with the square of the initial velocity. If you double your initial velocity, then the maximum range will be four times <coughs> larger. What else? What are the other uh, results of this expression for range? Sinüs 30 ile sinüs 150 aynı mı? 
Huh? Let's draw the axis. This is, let's say, 30 degrees. And this is 150 degrees, right? But sinus is just this distance, right? Sine 30 degrees and sine 150 are the same. Likewise, sine 20 degrees and sine 160 are the same. Am I right? Birbirini 180 derece tamamlayan açıların sinüsleri birbirine eşittir. So the immediate consequence of this expression is if I fix my initial speed, okay, and let's say in the first choose a 30 degrees angle, the range is somewhere here, as you see. If I change my angle to 60 degrees, then it will land on the same position because 2 times 30, sine of 2 times 30 is equal to sine of 2 times 60, right? 60, 120, birbirine 180 derece tamam. Like sine of 15 degrees, uh, sine of 2 times 15 degrees is the same of sine of 2 times 75. So it doesn't matter if you throw the object with a 75 degrees up or 15 degrees up, they will, it will land on the same position, okay? All right, so this is an immediate consequence of uh, the range expression. What about the time of flight? If I throw it at 75 degrees and record the time, or if I throw it at 15 degrees, will be time of flight in the both cases equal to each other? Let's check. Time of flight is this, right? It goes with sine of theta. If you plug sine of 15 degrees and calculate it and sine of 75 degrees, they are, they are not the same. They are different. So one is uh, the 75 degrees will, will be a longer time on air, but the other one is shorter time. So this does not apply to time. But for range, if one is 15, other one is 75 degrees, they are the same. All right, so <coughs> R max, as I said, is V0 squared divided by G. And if I throw the same object, not on the surface of the Earth with the same speed, but on the surface of Moon, the ranges will be different, equal to, or on Moon, larger or less than on Earth. Ayda aynı cismi, aynı hızla, aynı açıyla atarsam. Ayda, ayın yüzeyinde. Daha uzak. Niye? Because G Moon is around 1.6 meter per second square and G Earth is 9.8. So since G Moon is less, the range will be larger on the moon. Okay, so let's do some examples. Not all of the projectile motions must be parabola, but it can be half of a parabola, right? Like in this example, a swimmer jumps off the edge with a horizontal speed, initial speed. Okay, not 
an angle between the uh, x-axis, but its velocity vector initially it has a zero degree. But of course, it has some initial height. Okay, this height you see is y zero. If you choose, if you choose the origin as here. And initial height of the <coughs> swimmer is, let's put it h, okay? And the question is, uh, what will be the expression of uh, the final velocity in terms of uh, the final height and the initial height? So if you want to find its uh, y component of the velocity at any position on the y-axis, it will be square of the velocity, it will be 2 times g h minus y, right? And if I, if y is equal to 0 on, uh, at the end of the, uh, the uh, jump, the y component of the velocity squared will be equal to 2 times g times the initial height, h. All right. Another question. I want you to work this question out now. And the question is, there is a golfer. And the golfer uh, wants to uh, shoot this golf ball to a hole behind a tree. And there is a tree between the hole and the golfer. And it... it shoots the ball, the ball, of course, will have a parabola as the trajectory, and it just barely passes through the top of the tree and lands in here. The question says, uh, the location of tree from the initial position in the x direction is 14 meters. And the landing position of the ball from its initial position, let's say here, this is the landing position, is given 17.8 meters. And also the landing time, that means total time of flight is given, 2.24 seconds. And the angle of its initial velocity with the x-axis is given 54 degrees. The question is, what is the initial velocity or speed, the initial speed, and a uh, height of the tree? Okay. Forget about this H. And by the way, it's not three meters. The answer. Y three means the height of three. Okay. So work this out. You have time. What? How can we find the sinus of shift for degree? Use your calculator or cell phone. You have a calculator in the cell phone?
And you can easily get the time it takes the ball to reach the uh, top of the tree, right? From this. Because you know the location of the tree, and it is given by us 14 meters per second, uh, 14 meters. And if you divide by this by the velocity in the x direction, it's just v0 times cosine 54 uh, degrees. And v0, you just calculate it as 13.5 meter per second. You can calculate time of flight to reach the top of the tree as 1.76 second. The next is just you will plug this time in the y equation. That's it, right? If you put this in the y equation, then you can find the height of the uh, ball right at this time. And it will be the height of 3. If you pl plug and check this in the uh, y equation, you will find the height of 3 as 4.03 meters. I recommend you to go through all of the examples in your book also there are millions of examples in Google you can search. I advise you to uh, understand this by doing more examples, okay? <coughs> Let's think about another uh, example. It's the landing of a bomb shell or whatever it is thrown from a plane. Again, it's a horizontal motion. Uh, we have a plane that goes by a speed of 40 meter per second and it is constant speed while going with this speed it drops a package not a bomb it's a package and so you can tell immediately this is a kind of horizontal motion because there is no initial vertical velocity right? And the horizontal uh, velocity, initial velocity of the package will be just the uh, speed of the plane, right? Because it just, uh, it is released from the plane. Uh, it will be V0, it uh, will be 40 meter per second and theta is equal to zero. The question is, where the, does the package hit the ground? Okay. And you have also the information of the height of the initial height of the package. The package is thrown from the plane when the plane is at the height of 100 meters. So if you know this, you can find the time of flight, right? Because uh, if you put initial uh, y as on this expression y as h 100 meters and the final y will be of course zero right because the package lands on the ground so the final position on y will be zero and do the rest calculations he put h is equal to 100 g is 9.8 and solve this for t if you solve this for t you will find t as 4.52 seconds time of the package to reach the ground <coughs> and there's a nice expression for this it is 2 times the height divided by g if always you, you, you release or you throw an object which has horizontal velocity only not a initial uh, vertical velocity if you also know the height initial height this is the time it takes to reach the ground, okay? And since you know time now, you can easily find x because you know vx. vx is 40 meter per second and this does not change during the motion of the package, right? Although the total speed of the package do change during the motion, it's the x component of the velocity, 40 meter per second, do not change at all. Because in the x direction, there is no any acceleration, okay? If you ignore the friction, air friction, the speed or the x component of the velocity will not change. So 
in the equation x is equal to vx times t, you can easily find x. Vx is 40 second, 40 meter per second, and time you just found 4.52 seconds. Just plug and chuck, you will find the package will land on 181 meters from its initial position in x. From here to here is just 181 meters. The rest is <coughs> rather easy. Uh, well, you, you, all, you also, also know the height because it's, it's just uh, zero when it hits the ground. You can calculate the y component of the velocity. Can you? The x component of the velocity does not change. It is always 4 meter per second. But when it hits the ground, of course, since it falls a distance, it will gain some uh, vertical speed, right? Vertical velocity. And this is nothing but g times t, right? Initial velocity in y is zero, but since it's falling down, the velocity is minus g times t. Like a times t is the velocity if you have an acceleration. But this is only the y component. And we have minus in here because of the choice of the coordinate system, because the object is going down and its velocity in the y component will be minus, of course. You can easily also calculate this. It will be minus 44.3 if you put t as 4.52 seconds. So this is minus. And the next question is, what is the angle that the object hits the ground? Okay. So <coughs> the object hits the ground with some angle. Let's carry this to here. And the object hits the ground with this final speed. And if you draw axis in here at this point, this will have an angle. This angle will be calculated by the inverse tangent of the y component of the velocity divided by the x component of the velocity. And this is from the last lecture. If you know the x and y component of a vector, you can easily calculate its angle with the x-axis. right? This is the uh, formula for it. And if you plug and chuck, your calculator will give you minus 48 degrees. This is minus because it, it is below the x-axis, not the above. Right? If it were a plus, it will be above the x-axis. But since one of the components is minus, you will have minus angle. OK, that's it. If you have any questions for this, I think we have another example. And this looks like a little more complicated. But no, uh, what you do in here is just the first thing in all of the problems, in all of the questions, just Put a coordinate system, choose a coordinate system. You can either choose your coordinate, origin of the coordinate system, right when the initial position of the object, where, where the initial position of the object, or if there is a, a initial height like this, you can choose the ground as the origin. It depends on you. Okay? Once you fix this uh, origin, then the rest is easy. <coughs> You will use all the kinematics equation in y, in x, vy, vx, everything is there. And you also have uh, the information of vy and vx in terms of the accelerations and the position, not time. <coughs> so work on this problem at home. I will put today on the uh, web page. We will discuss it later if you have a, a question. For today, uh, I will end this chapter by the last concept, which is relative velocity. 
Sometimes there are more than one object moving, okay? You may have, like in this picture, two cars. You may define the position of these cars with respect to a fixed axis origin. You have car A and car B. But the thing is, sometimes you, you want to know the position of one car with respect to other, okay? You can uh, know, you can get the information of the speed of this car with respect to this origin and the other car with respect to origin. But you are curious about when you are looking the car A from car B, what, it, what its velocity, okay? Also the position. So uh, when you know working with vectors, uh, this is easy because once you define the position of car A and the position of car B with these position vectors, RAO and RBO, then the position of car A with respect to position of car B is nothing but the difference of these two vectors, okay? This defines the relative position of car A with respect to car B. <coughs> and similarly, you can get an expression for the uh, velocity of the car A with respect to B by the velocity of two cars with respect to origin. It will be just a difference of these velocity vectors. Let's do an example for this. Sometimes you will see these problems. There is a river, okay, it's flowing with a constant flow of water. And there is a boat across, moving across the river, okay. And boat wants to move to the other side of the river with a vertical velocity. If it starts its motion with a vertical velocity with respect to the water, you will see that the boat will no, not go in a vertical direction, but in rather like this direction. Some angle has A with respect to the initial position, okay? And you want to know what is the velocity of the boat with respect to the observer on the ground, okay? If you know the velocity of the river, and if you know the velocity of the boat with respect to the river, then you can calculate the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground. This is easy because if this is the velocity of the boat with respect to the river, and if this is the flow of the water, the velocity of the flow of the water, you will add these two vectors vectorially, and this vector will be the velocity vector of your boat with respect to the observer on the ground. So let's do an example, very uh, quick example. This velocity is given as, let's say, 4 meter per second. The boat has a velocity with respect to the water as 4 meter per second. And if the flow of the water is 3 meter per second, this is 3 meter per second. I hear immediate answers that this velocity of the boat with respect to the observer on the ground will be 5 meter per second, right? If the river has no any flow, zero, then the boat will move in the vertical direction to the ground with a velocity of 4 meter per second. Okay, so we will talk about this in the uh, next lecture. Do some maybe two or more problems. And we will finish chapter 4. So, uh, bugün ikinci grup deney yapıyor. Saat 3'te başlıyor. Ee, en alt katta biliyorsunuz laboratuvarın
Продолжение следует...